You know, really what Social Ties does is we produce content on behalf of brands. You know, in today's world, we see the brands as the content providers. You know, in, in past, uh, you know, over the, since the 50s or so, in television in particular, it's been brands inserting their message into programming. And clearly, that is changing rapidly, and has. But now, there's a huge acceleration in that. So the brands really need to be the content providers. And I think it's, it's better that way, because the brands should be getting credit for all this amazing content content uh, when, and they weren't they were kind of the intrusive person you know, or intrusive party coming in and interrupting the experience but they're paying for it all so when brands start to think of themselves as content creators everything changes because they are the ones bringing the extreme sports they are the ones bringing the recipes they are the ones bringing whatever is innate to their ethos and what they do and as a result they get credit for that and they also uh, are able to build up their brand name and people begin to identify them with that type of content. Uh, so we help them to bring their brands alive within social and then across digital. There's, there's so much that's, that's happening in video and you know, there's nothing like sight, sound and motion. I think it's one of the reasons why, why you know, advertisers are still putting a ton of money in traditional linear TV. Um, because sight, sound, and motion works. But it, it works a lot better if that sight, sound, and motion is brought into social or even into digital, right? And it, it works even better if that, if that content is, is incredibly relevant to the consumer. And so much of, 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 of video content has been one to many. I'm gonna craft this beautiful piece of content and I'm gonna put it out there. And that, that works to a certain degree. I mean, you see that in the Super Bowl, you see that during the Oscars and these beautiful pieces of content come out. But what I think really works is, 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 is I think brands need to think more about relevancy. And brands need to think about, you know, that they show I get you. And, 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 and one of the things that's working really well is when brands are partnering with the right influencers. So and these influencers, particularly among a young audience, are superstars. I mean, we worked with Nick Coletti, uh, who is uh, basically an icon among young males. I mean, he is, he is Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Matt Damon, all wrapped into one for, like, for, for, for you know, somebody in their, who's 50 or so. So these young, young kids look at this guy, Nick Coletti. So that's one of the reasons why Jack in the Box has partnered with him. And so when Jack in the Box is together with Nick Coletti, uh, and they're producing amazing content, they're, they're, they're saying, I get you. Uh, and I think that that relevancy is, is really, really, really key uh, to be part of the customer's world. Um, so the other thing that I think is, is really uh, important now is proximity, right? You know, you can say, I get you, and I'm partnering with the right content, I'm creating the right content, but it becomes even more powerful if that content is close to the, the consumer themselves. So local influencer marketing is huge. Uh, so that, and you can do this at scale, uh, where you can take a look at the, the, you know, the top 20 cities or even 50 cities across the country, partnering with those local influencers that are connected to followers uh, is really, really powerful. I think it's really interesting because I, I have come from cable television. I worked at the Weather Channel and USA Networks in the 90s. And it was all about you know, who's going to take over. Is it going to be the computer or is it going to be the television? Computer or television? And you know, the reality is you know, it becomes both. And companies like Roku actually bring the two together. Because the consumer really doesn't care. The consumer just wants the content, right? And whatever device is easiest for them to view it on, that's what they're going to use. So uh, the reality is, though, you know, although a lot of us are watching you know, movies on, on our iPhones, uh, or even our computers, you know, it's much better to actually just see it uh, up on the TV screen. You can, you can kick back, you can relax, it's a different viewing environment, it's better for the advertiser. Uh, and you know, companies like Roku allow you know, the consumer to have that. Uh, so I think from, a, from an advertiser's perspective is they just gotta be relevant, they've gotta be entertaining, they have to be informative, they have to be inspiring, they need to make the world a better place. You know, large corporate giants, uh, I think, have a responsibility now to, to do things that, that help make the world a better place, to make people's lives better. Uh, and I'm talking everything from, from, uh, from you know, sustainability and water stewardship all the way to thinking about how I can really make this person laugh 
and then maybe I can weave my brand in there somehow. But the first and foremost, I think they need to think of the stories that, that are trending and they need to think about the, uh, their audience and really what's making them laugh before they think about the products and services of their brand. So if they can do that and they can think about that differently and then it's incredibly powerful in terms of how they connect with their audience.